Beckman, approximately 130 pounds. There is Yamamoto. Well, and you're going to see some great action with these women. You know, women's wrestling is, is just definitely deserves to be in the Olympics. They're very technically sound. They're very physically strong and, and, and quick. And, and you're going to see some great matches today. It's a point we'll be making through the broadcast today, but women's wrestling will debut at the Olympics in 2004 in Athens. We saw some great action there. Seiko Yamamoto in on the leg, just barely got, or just, just missed taking her down. The whole idea of wrestling is to control your opponent. Here Yamamoto's in what's called a front head and arm position. She has Ivashko's head and her arm in control. If she can get Ivashko down on the mat and get behind her, she'd get one point for a takedown. Points are awarded based on how you gain control and then especially maintain control of your opponent. Back exposure is very important. We'll highlight that as we go along in this match. Two three-minute halves in a wrestling match, plus an overtime if required. And you see that outer ring on the, on the mat that's called the zone. Wrestlers have to try to stay inside that zone when they go out of bounds. If nobody's in control, they come back to the center and they start in the neutral position. Here, another attack by Yamamoto. And again, on that single leg position, if you can grab somebody's leg, they get off balance. It's a lot easier to get them down to the mat. So you'll see a lot of wrestlers trying to grab each other's legs. We saw Yamamoto a year ago at the World University Championships in Edmonton. And both of us were amazed at her quickness and agility, strength. Well, and not only is she quick and, and, and strong, but she's very technically sound as well. Here the referee gives what's called a passivity call to Avashko. You have to try to be aggressive and active throughout the match. If you're being passive, they call it, if you're not being aggressive enough, you get penalized for that. They let the other wrestler decide if they want to start on the, on the down position or standing on their feet. Here Yamamoto selected to put the Avashko down on her, on her hands and knees. That's called the referee's position, and it's a real advantage for Yamamoto. Here she's trying to turn her onto her back. If she can expose Avashko's back to the mat, if the back passes 90 degrees, she'd get two points for that. Yamamoto has bulked up in the past year. Last year she competed at 55 kilograms. This year up to 59. As we saw there, if no, no action occurs, if, if nobody scores within, a, within about a 10, 15 second time period, the referee will stop the wrestlers and they'll start again in the neutral position on their feet. Yamamoto, 23 years old, Avashko, 27. Dangerous position here for Avashko. What Yamamoto's trying to do is she's trying to pull Avashko forward so that she spreads her out a bit. Vashko does a great job of countering, gets out. This is the farthest Vashko has ever advanced at the Worlds. Her previous top finish was a 10th in 2000. Here the referee calling passivity on Yamamoto. Vashko elects to start on the top. So basic premise here is if you're on the top, you want to turn your opponent. If you're on the bottom, you do whatever you can to prevent that from happening. Exactly. You see Yamamoto pulling the arm off here. You see her climbing up, not letting Avash go uh, grab her around the waist. You do whatever you can to just stay on your stomach. If you're in the defensive position, if you're in the offensive position, you can try for a pin or you can just try to expose the back to the mat for two points. And how long does the referee generally allow that sort of action to continue? Well, there it was about eight seconds, ten seconds. It, you know, if somebody's in the middle of scoring a point, they won't stop the match. But if not much is happening, then they'll stop it and start them up on their feet again. Now, should this first half end at 0-0, then we explain another rule. Oh, thankfully it didn't end at 0-0. Beautiful move by Yamamoto. Off that front head and arm position again. She was in that position a lot during the first period. She scored right at the end of the, the period. And so it was one point for taking Ivashko from her feet down to the mat, another two for exposing the back. Three nothing, Yamamoto, and here's a look. Yeah, anytime you go from your feet straight to your back, you get three points for that. Excellent move here. She gets Ivashko off on her heels, gets her down to the mat. As they go out of bounds, they get three points for that, that move. The start of period number two, again, three minutes on the clock. The three-time world champion, points and wins the goal, is Fosco Rodriguez on the left. Three minutes. 
So 3 nothing doesn't sound like a huge lead, but for a wrestler as good defensively as Yamamoto, she'll sort of make this tough, won't she? Well, and what you saw there is Avashko now. She's got to score three points. She took a little bit of a chance, put herself in a bad position. Yamamoto's a great counterattack wrestler. Got a, did a great job getting in on Avashko's leg, took her down out of bounds for one point. If you go out of bounds as you're scoring, then you come back to the center and you start in that referee's position in control on the top because you didn't get a chance to be in that position as you went out of bounds. And so Yamamoto scores on that exchange for nothing now. You see Yamamoto smiling there. She feels quite confident here. She's in control. She's not going to make any mistakes. She's not going to take any big chances. She's not going to push too hard. There, Abashko tried what was called a shoulder throw. That works well when somebody's pushing into you. Yamamoto's not going to do that. She's just going to hang back, take little shots, stay in control. Women's wrestling has exploded in Japan, has it not? They certainly, as we watch this progress today, we will see Japanese competitors in almost every final. Well, J Japan was one of the early adopters of women's wrestling. They've, they've always had a very strong women's wrestling program. And as all the other countries have got stronger, Japan's gotten stronger as well. And, and they're quite dominant in, in, in women's wrestling. More so than in men's wrestling by far. And Yamamoto at the top of that chart, a three-time world champion, a university champion. Making things tough for Avashko. Looks like she might have taken a shot to the eye there in that exchange. A lot of times you, you get you get hit in the face, uh, either you know a, a headbutt, sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose. Sometimes you get a finger in the eye. Uh, it's pretty common, and it's hard it's hard not to let that happen. Here she attempts what's called a high crotch. Avashko pokes her in the eye with her thumb there. Not on purpose. That, those things happen and the referee will allow some injury time. That's right, you're allowed, actually, it's unlimited referee, uh, unlimited injury time. It's up to the discretion of the mat doctor to decide uh, how much time you need, whether you can continue the match. This isn't a big problem. One minute, 45 seconds left in the second period. The one thing Yamamoto's gotta be careful of is she's being kind of passive here. Vashko's doing most of the action. Yamamoto's countering. She may get a passivity call. Oh, beautiful. Good action there. Unfortunately for Vashko, no points being scored. Again, Yamamoto wasn't pushing in too much. She was able to hold back. Didn't get exposed on that throw. Back exposure is the key in this sport. It will garner you two points if you can have that result in a move on your opponent. Vashko again trying for that shoulder throw. She's getting pretty desperate here. I mean, it's pretty hard to score four points in one minute when you're behind like this. So she's really got to start taking some chances, really has to start being a lot more aggressive than she was in that first period. You saw that shot behind the Japanese coaches. Yamamoto is a darling of the Japanese media, and there is a horde, a horde of Japanese media here following her exploits and the exploits of the Japanese team. What Avashko needs here is a throw. She's never going to get a throw on Yamamoto because she stays so low, right? She's a lot lower than Avashko, and it's pretty hard to throw somebody when they're a lot lower than you. Yamamoto out of bounds. They'll come back to the middle. One of the things I love about the Japanese wrestlers in the women's division is they're so positive. You know, they're almost all smiling. They're all... Uh, very uh, charismatic, energetic, and they're very active wrestlers. You don't see a lot of activity here with Yamamoto because she's protecting the lead, but in most cases, they're just very, very fun to watch. 20 seconds away from a shutout win, Yamamoto of Japan. Here, Vashko's trying to lift Yamamoto up, trying to get her out of that low stance so she can try to throw her. Yamamoto's not going to let her do it. Looking to stay in the middle and away from the edge of the rings and let time tick away. And it does. Seiko Yamamoto of Japan, her fourth career gold at the World Championships. This one in the 59-kilogram division.
Well, maybe not the most exciting match in the world, Bruce, but it was a very smart match on Yamamoto's part. She did what she had to do to, to win the match. She scored points when they were there. She didn't take any real big chances. Very smart match. Seiko Yamamoto.